Ms. Campbell, I think it's winner, winner, chicken dinner, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're going to bring out right now. I'm just not sure what you're going to, like, answer that with. You know what? I mean, I'm not, I'm not competitive, but I am. So I just kind of think I needed to win this. And now that I know that I've won it, um, I think we can begin. just say this I don't want to pretend to be sitting here talking about these movies as if I've actually a ever seen them <laughs> or b even like them I'm so glad you said that <laughs> because I don't um and that doesn't mean that they don't have a place in the world no they it's have just a place in the yeah world, but I don't watch them because they scare me my parents screened the exorcist for my 15th birthday and it freaked me out so badly that for the rest of school, my girlfriends would run behind me in the hall and they would say, Demi, Demi, why you do this to me, Demi? Demi, why you do this to me? So much so that I named my first car, my first car was a 1972 um, Mercury Capri. And it had a license, a personalized license plate, Demi. Oh, no. It freaked me out so badly. So the idea that you and I are in um, horror movies is watch. interesting. I'm exactly the same. Exactly the same. I cannot watch horror movies. Can't do it. Okay, I was, so I was it, 13 years old at a sleepover. It was called The Changeling with George C. Scott. It's a great movie, but didn't sleep for months. Who does that to children? That aren't their own. You do. <laughs> Apparently you do, and you do it for money. So, <laughs> but there is something called a scream queen yeah. and uh, you are one. I don't really even know what it means. Appa apparently it means you're a queen and you scream a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, it, listen, those movies did well by me, you know, or I did yeah. well by those movies, I should say. Hello, Sydney. Like scary movies. What's the point? They're all the same. They did great things for my career, did great things for my life. I had fun on them. When Scream came along, was that the first horror yeah, I, movie that you did? I had done one in Canada when I was like 17 years old called The Dark. It was supposed to be this creature under the ground and it looked like a really cute worm when it came out of the hole. I was a police officer at 17 years old. They hadn't tried a costume on me and they had gotten it from a second hand shop and it was a men's costume and I had like a Yogi Bear <laughs> And a hat with a rim like this thing. It's really hilarious if you can find it. <laughs> so oh, I think I think we will be having a link sent somewhere. <laughs> I think that may be my hostess gift. No, but really, yeah, Scream. I had done in the same year I did a movie called The Craft, which I guess is sort of But isn't movie. that scary? It is, but it's sort of more about witches. It's Yeah, but that's scary. It is scary. Girls, watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> We are the weirdos, Mr. When you said yes to Scream. People are like, oh, do you love horror films? Is that what you did? I was like, it's the first lead I was offered in a movie. Oh, the, hello. You know, I, got, I did an audition for a lead in a film and it happened to be Scream. You know, listen, it was a great script. It was a great script. Kevin Williamson, who did. Yeah, no, I know. So it was I, lucky to end up my first lead in a film happened to be a really great script. You know, lucky. Say, hey. Get it. Same here. Exactly. I had been on a TV series where I had one line like every other week. Here was a script where every single page had the name Lori on it and exactly the same for me. A lead in a movie was insane. Oh, look. Did you prepare for it in any way? Like, was there any like I didn't have to do much preparation. The script was really good. And Wes Craven was a really good director and knew what he was doing. And I was surrounded by a really great cast, funny, exhilarating, charismatic cast. Mm -hmm. I think it was great about Scream is that it sort of makes fun of the genre itself and it had humor and it was a different angle on a horror film. 
and it allowed for you know lots of improv and fun in that way so it wasn't typical and like I said you know Wes Craven he's a really great director knew how to cast it it's you know what it is with any film or what, whatever genre it's like magic when the right cast come together and the all the elements can fall into place it was another take on it it was it was not some sort of replication it was a new idea and the new idea based on an old new idea really was clever yeah. and and inventive and homage yes yeah if that's mm -hmm. a word and if it isn't i believe we may have just coined it <laughs> homage but it it apparently was homage to those sort of horror movies of the john carpenter era yes absolutely but then with a reinvention to it i told you he's right around the corner Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, look behind you. Look behind you. It took a look at the genre itself. There was lots of dialogue about the genre itself. With right, um, right, and rules and rules of the horror films. Yes, you know, yeah, which is clever. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say I'll be right back because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh! What's interesting to me is you make a movie like this. Like in the craft, I get people coming up to me for both the craft and for Sydney in Scream. I get people who will say, you changed my life. I was a loser or I was insecure in school. And then your character made me stand up for myself or inspired me or made me feel strong. And I'm like, I just make an horror movie. Yeah, yeah. But that's but, the I mean, beauty. It's, beautiful. it's love. Yeah. It's just amazing what can come out of something that you have no idea. You know what I mean? Right. And how lucky for both of us that we have that we represented women, strong women and uh, strong women, smart women, women who were able to sort of take these outrageous situations and sort of manifest their own destiny during it in a in a very powerful way. It was a surprise to me and a real privilege for me that John and Deborah Yes. had some understanding that there was something more to me than I even understood at whatever age I was. And then because of their decision, I've then been able to have the same experience that you just shared, where Lori Strode and the decisions she makes and the longevity of her storyline is somehow attributed directly to me as right. if I wrote it. Yeah, like as if I like planned it all <laughs> no, exactly. when in fact I didn't have anything to do about it and I just had the privilege of that. I killed him. Hey, you can't kill the boogeyman. <laughs> and you've now done this, the same character, Sydney. now. I'm about to go do five in a week and a half. Five times. I'm about to go to five. Over the ages, courses of ages, I don't know how old you are, but I mean. No, it's been 25 years. That's just fantastic. See, I wish Kevin Williamson was here. I know. To I be able to, I really you know, to, I was like, we should have to Kevin say, how, what, how does that feel? And in the same way of having John Carpenter here to be able to say, how does it feel that 25 years later or 40 years later, in my case, two women, are having a conversation about a character that you created. I've had the benefit of seeing John. Of course, he had to bless the 2018 version that David Gordon Green directed and wrote. Mm -hmm. So John was around and very involved. And he and I had dinner one night. Mm -hmm. And he's such an interesting guy. And obviously, I owe my entire career to him. And so I've tried to honor it. And I'm sure you do the same thing. Yeah. Yes, passed away. But my last experience with him, actually, his wonderful wife, Ia, and he were in town and called. And he had said um, that Ia was a fan of Elvis Costello. And we happened to have a friend who had tickets at the bowl. And I had a friend who used to nanny for Elvis. And so I was able to get tickets for the four of us. And oh, get us wow. back on the stage afterwards and had this beautiful night together under the stars and I was able to talk about how grateful I was and we knew mm -hmm. answer at the time and it was just super super special and he passed away after that so that was my last time with him but I was so grateful to be able to have that moment with him and acknowledge like 
the life change that he made for me. Wes was a obviously a big part of that first go round, and uh, you felt obviously very connected to him and stayed connected to him. So when they were going to suggest new people, how did that happen? So I had been really apprehensive about doing another one. You know, there people had asked in the past whether I would do one without Wes or whether I'd make another one. And I always sort of felt like it would be too difficult to do it without Wes. You know, he was the master of these films. He did such a beautiful job on them. We were a family. But when time has passed and when these two directors came to me, they actually wrote me a letter. They said they basically are directors because of these films and are mm. because of Wes Craven. And they really are so excited to be a part of these films and what an honor it is to do them and that they really want to do justice to Wes and honor mm. his legacy. That meant a lot. That letter meant a lot to me. And then I went and watched one of their films and it was brilliant and, and in keeping in tone. So mm-hmm. I can do this. I can do this. I think this could be a lot of fun and a good idea. And these are people, these are people who are doing it for the love of these films. You know what I mean? So that meant something. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Stepping back, stepping back into the sticky blood, Jamie. (laughs) Well, same thing. My phone rang. I was on vacation with my husband in the mountains. The phone rang and it was um, my friend slash godson slash knucklehead, Jake Gyllenhaal saying, hey, my friend David Gordon Green would like to talk to you about a Halloween movie. I was like, okay. last thing in the world I ever thought I would do again. Last thing in my mind. So I said, sure. And he called. And I remember he said, like, well, he was trying to explain to me what he said. I said, you know what, David? Just send it to me. I'll read it. I'll call you tomorrow. Like, and I saw exactly what they were trying to do. And I, the homage of it, the homaginess of it all <laughs> And yet its own very unique, terrifying take on it all. Because trauma is generational. It is everlasting. I loved that they were going to honor the fact that what happened to somebody 40 years before still had an effect. So the second movie that we shot takes place immediately where the first movie lets off, which is very similar to what Halloween 2 did. Halloween 2 picked up exactly at the end of Halloween 1. So i am been stabbed in the stomach by Michael. And so the first sequence is us in the back of this truck, which you see us climb into at the end of the movie. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, no. I posted on Instagram this video because, you know, you're in the back of a truck. They're trailing behind you. But I'm supposed to literally be bleeding out. Like I'm supposed to be hemorrhaging. And so it, we had to freshen the sticky blood. And so they, they have this big bucket, like a paint bucket. And by the end of it, I was just like, give me my bucket. I want my bucket. Jamie, what are you doing? (laughs) Don't take my bucket. Because it was warm and it was super cold. David called it the sauce. (laughs) He said, bring in more sauce. Um, And who's going to be in the movie with you? David Arquette, Courtney Cox. Oh, so the whole crew or whoever's not dead. We're the survivors. And then there's a new cast. And do you stay in contact with all those people? We do. Yeah. I mean, we are always really happy to see each other when we do these films. It's like going back to summer camp. None of us were anybody, you know, whatever that means. Yeah. It was Drew Barrymore. And she was Drew Barrymore. But, you know, Courtney Cox was first year of Friends. I was first year of Party of Five. Matthew Lillard, David Arquette, Jamie Kennedy, Rose McGowan. Like, it's this cast that all of us sort of got these mm-hmm. you know, careers afterwards. So we were just young and innocent and thinking. I remember sitting around like a bonfire and we're having a lot of fun in the film. And just, just thinking, do you think this, do you think, like, if people see this movie, that there might be a Halloween costume. They're like, no. Nah. Right, and far out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you know, it's yeah, so sure. I love that on Halloween. I feel like I have already my own costume, so I don't have to wear anything. But it's always fun for me to open the door when there's a ghost face there. <laughs> sure. You know, because it's a nice surprise for people. So that kind of thing is is fun. And we really- but also, it's nice to hear about your camaraderie and 
You know, there's my favorite experience of my life was making Halloween, the first one in 1978. We had nothing to lose. We didn't know that we had anything to gain. We were just so happy to have this gig. And the way that it was made, like you said, it's a family, it's like camp. You know, the original Halloween was made in 17 days with a like 12 people. I mean, the crew was super small and the intimacy, the laying around on the lawn for 10 minutes at the lunch break with this, everybody was young and it just, there was a magic, mm-hmm. there was magic happening. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. none of us, not one person, I, I would dare say even John Carpenter. And Deborah Hill. I don't think anybody knew. By the time, you see, by the time Scream came, there obviously had to have been some sense that what you were doing might, because it was, as you said, sort of based on those other movies, so that there was already a, the Halloween movie, no one had a clue. Not a clue. Yeah, yeah. But I think there'd been about a decade where none of these films had done well because we did a twist on it there was sort of this resurgence yes yes um so we really didn't know you didn't know and at the time it was not something you did really right Um, it was poo-pooed really and and but the part was big my agents called me uh i think it was the first weekend they called me and they're like nev the whole team's on the phone i'd never had a team call before Mm. but when a team call i thought oh no and they were like it made 30 million and i was like Oh no, I thought that was bad. You know, I didn't know that 30 million was a really big deal. And they're like, no, 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 that's really good. And I think by the third weekend we were at a hundred or something. It was insane, you know? Um, But I was so clueless about the business. I really, I was a dancer. I was going to be a dancer. I hadn't really, my intention was not to act. And it just sort of, luckily for me, took over, the acting took over because I had a lot of injuries and stuff. Did the success of your movies have an effect on the rest of your career? Like, did it have an effect on getting other jobs or the direction that you went? Other than, like, feeling pigeonholed at times, possibly, did it also sort of bolster your career? So the truth of the matter is I didn't really make much money off of the horror movies. To be perfectly honest, I actually didn't really make what we would in in what people i mean look assume we're we're actors so we already just make more money just based on the little work we do for the impact you know i mean it's hard to ever say i didn't make a lot of money tell that to a teacher or a nurse or you know what i mean as a young actress i did not i did not have ownership in the movies there was no profit participation there was no quote back end and Mm. i didn't get out for that reason and i certainly by halloween 2 which was my last of the six that i did when i was in my 20s early 20s i think i i I got paid okay for the time but it wasn't Mm -hmm. It, it, there was no large amount of money made. So from my standpoint, it wasn't ever a money. I couldn't equate my role in it with the success of the movies. Obviously, someone was making a lot of money. It was not me. And it was only in the latter years, the H2O, the obviously the 2018 Halloween, which by the way, 2018 was made just like Halloween 1978 nobody got paid up front everyone got paid scale it was it was yes but then obviously I had a piece of the pie as they would say so of course I've made some money off of the success of that movie so it's only now I'm 61 I mean I, I, I didn't legitimately make some money into in from horror movies until much, much, much later. What about you? I didn't make a huge amount. On three, I did all right, but no back end. You know, there's always the promise of back end. And then of course it's it's drowned in um, publicity and costs and all the reasons they say, oh, actually, no, we didn't make the amount of money that we're claiming we made in all the press <laughs> so that we don't have to give you that, unfortunately. You know, it was the Weinstein. So um, yeah, well, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah 
So no, yeah. and no, but I, and and I've not had a, a piece of the pie per se, but I, didn't, I haven't done badly. And like you said, it is in, in no way is it comparable to what we say uh, not making money is. By the way, we we would have no problem or i mean the industry has no problem when a uh, when a man millions you know makes millions of dollars we as a society go good on you but then if a woman says well i would like that same piece of the pie i think people would think you're being greedy or you're not being grateful as if somehow we as women have to be just grateful for the opportunity which we've already explained we are yes it's like you and i are are, make equal (laughs) right but you and i are sitting here as two women who opened this whole thing with out of the gratitude of of the serendipity of our lives that we had these opportunities but we have both worked for many 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 years to continue our careers and at some point it's okay to say uh yeah, no, no, I'm going to get paid this or I'm not going to be able to play in your sandbox. Happy Halloween, Michael. I always find this time of year, I'm suddenly getting recognized a lot more. And of course, it's because Halloween is here and you know that they're playing the movies over and over and over again. Yes, yes. Do <laughs> um, you like Halloween? Tis the season to be scary. Yes. Um, so I took Halloween very seriously as a mom, both of my children, 10 years apart, you know, Halloween for children mm-hmm. is a extraordinary opportunity to mm, dress up and, and create, and my son always chose these really random video game characters that I got my singer sewing machine out and was creating. I was, I, I, I there are a couple of my handmade outfits that he went to World of Warcraft conventions in that I was quite proud of. To think that there is a holiday that really annually comes right back to me. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, there's just, it's a lovely feeling because I do feel like the month of October, even when I wasn't making horror movies, it just always was Halloween just naturally would make me remember all of that. So I enjoy it in that way. And I loved Halloween with my kids and, you know, obviously did it all. There's not really a Laurie Strode costume, although hold please. (laughs) I want to see it. Hold please. (laughs) But people must come out as Michael, no? Let me see. Oh no. There is a Laurie Strode action figure (laughs) that... Uh, I I am very happy to have. Oh, so figure. I I I <laughs> did get an action figure out of the Halloween franchises, and I'm very happy with my Laurie Strode action figure. Awesome. awesome.